Father in heaven, our Father, Lord, we bow before you this morning in our hearts and our minds. And, and God, we are we're thanking you for your goodness and your grace that you have shown to each one that's in this room. But Lord, we are here for a very special occasion, and that's to remember and to to memorialize the life of Teresa, a mother, a daughter, Lord, an aunt, a wife, and a friend. Lord, we, we ask for your peace. We ask your Holy Spirit to bring a strength and a comfort that only he can bring. And God, today I, I pray for Philip and I pray for, for Kenny and Carrie and Josh and and Jared and the whole family. God, I pray, Lord, that today would be not really a closure, but just a, a day to specially set aside and remember the, the very special life that you touched each one of them with, or with Teresa. And Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that this would be something that you would be honored and glorified with, that you would give us guidance and strength as we go through this. And God, we, we pray that Lord, is no doubt that Teresa is is witnessing this. That God, she would she would smile, and each one would sense her presence here today. As we know, that that's a very real thing. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Today is a is a day that we all in our lives have to face, and it's very difficult. One of the one of the greatest pleasures in life is is loving someone, is is knowing the love of someone, and there's just no greater love than our mother can give. There'll be a lot said about Teresa's life today and her her love that she had for for her Savior and for for you, and that's what it's meant to be for today. It's for you. It's we know that if Teresa uh, could come back, she wouldn't. But this is for you. This is for you to grieve and to mourn and to also, also to celebrate. So we're going to start off with, with Philip, and he's going to bring the, the eulogy. And we, uh, I had a very, very uh, enjoyable time uh, yesterday with the family. I, I'm, I'm it's kind of amazing how that you you become bonded to people over the most tragic events in life. And that's what brings us close together. And so right now we have Philip that's going to come up and bring the eulogy. she met her first husband, Jim Williams. They were married, and they had four children, Terry, Kenny, Roy, and Josh. Teresa lived in many places. Uh, those that I know are Texas, California, 
Alaska, Nevada, New Jersey, Florida. There could be others. <laughs> she moved around quite a bit in her early days. Uh, after her marriage to Jim uh, ended, she met, met Doug Carlisle. And they got married and had another son, Jared. In 1986, Teresa and Doug moved the family to New Jersey looking for a new beginning. Teresa had various jobs, but the one she wanted most was working for AT&T. She wanted that job so bad that she was willing to commute 54 miles one way every day. And with just a high school education and a GED diploma, she worked her way up to maintain to, uh, managing multi-million dollar cell site installations at Bell Laboratories. <coughs> that is quite an accomplishment. Yes. The greatest accomplishment, though, she always said, was being a mother. She was blessed to have 13 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Autumn K would have been Teresa's fifth grandchild. Teresa and Doug separated in early 1998. She moved out with Jared and supported herself and Jared. Teresa and I then met in the summer of 1998. It was sort of by accident. We worked in the same area. One day after work, I saw her still in the office, like around 6 o'clock, in one of those late nights. I just saw her there, so I just stopped in, saying, what's up? What are you doing? Because I was the, the main manager, and I was, you know, making sure <laughs> my managers were, were, were doing a good job. But anyway, we talked mostly about work. We talked about 20 minutes. And, and then I surprised her and myself, I actually asked her out. I said, hey, why don't you come over to my home tomorrow and we'll have a couple glasses of wine. You can meet my kids. My kids are still home. Um, and she said, okay, I'll follow you home from work. So that meeting, uh, went very well. We had a good time. We talked mostly about family. You know, I had three kids there. And they keep coming down, you know, because they're nosy. Their dad, had, their dad hasn't dated in four years or anything like that. <laughs> Teresa was the first woman I really met after my first wife had passed. So I, you know, it went, it went really well. We had a, we had a good time. We, you know, we, we kicked it off pretty good. So I suggested we, uh, we go to the movies that Friday and you know, for dinner, you know, do the whole real date thing. And at that moment, neither of us imagined that our lives would be changing dramatically. That date was the start of our romance for 15 years. One of Teresa's greatest tragedies, she had two of them, as she always referred to, was her losing her son Roy in 2012. And my granddaughter, Donna, who died 15 hours at the birth. Both died in her arms. And she always maintained that she had some kind of spiritual connection to both of them. Then in 1999, Teresa was uh, diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. She fought that cancer by getting the tumor removed, taking eight rounds of chemo, 32 rounds of radiation, all the while she continued to work every day. She scheduled these things on a Friday, suffered through the weekend, and she wanted to go to work Monday. 
then 2001 was a big year for us. I, uh, they offered an early retirement package. I was going to accept. I was just, I've been waiting for that for a long time. I had already had 33 years in. They were going to give a five and five, meaning they would add five years to your salary and five years to your age. So that gave me 38 years to go out with, which was a good mention. Um, Teresa just barely qualified. And she wasn't going to take the package. But I talked her into it because I said, they're giving free medical. I said, you know, this medical situation was going crazy at the time. And I, I sort of talked her into it. And, you know, because we weren't even engaged or anything. So she really, um, you know, she had to be careful because <laughs> she didn't know if I was going to be around or what. <laughs> and, then, okay, this guy makes me retire. Now I've got no job. <laughs> But no, she, she did retire, and then um, we retired in July, and then in August, I asked her to marry me. And so we got married a year later in July 13, 2002, with both our families there in New Jersey. We honeymooned in Alaska, and we started our new life together. And then two years later, we came up with this bold plan to sell the house in New Jersey, buy an RV, and travel, travel the country. So 2005 came. We planned this in 2004. We said in the spring of 2005, we're going to kick this plan off. We planned it all winter. And we put the house up for sale on May 1st, bought an RV in April, actually, anticipating the sales would be pretty quick. And it was. We sold the house in four days. That was, that was back when the market was crazy. So we sold the house in four days. I mean, that hit us saying, OK, we've got, I guess it was six weeks to sell everything in the house or give it away and leave. <laughs> So June 20th came around, and we had successfully either given away everything, donated a lot of stuff, or sold some stuff in an estate sale. We, we basically just had 20 boxes that we, we kept, that stuff that I had to have. Virtually no furniture. Teresa had to keep this table, which she's been dragging all over the country. <laughs> Uh, and I'm trying to get offloaded to carry. It's a, it's a table her father made. Roy uh, Williams. Uh, Roy Jobs, excuse me. Um, yeah, that round table. Yeah. That round table, which I, uh, your, your dad even reinforced it a few times. <coughs> I had to reinforce it a few times. It's pretty stable now. We bought a nice glass top, but. You know, I think it should be stay in the family. So <laughs> at some point, and it's too big it's too to, big to ship. <laughs> so <laughs> we need we need to get a truck over there somehow. Anyway, from 2005 through 2009, uh, we traveled to many places uh, in this country, and we always kept saying we were grabbing the good life. And then we settled in Florida in April of 2006. And then to, and continued to travel as we made, built our home. It was fun because we moved into a house and had nothing. You know, like being kids again, starting out. No furniture, no bed, nothing. Just moving to an empty <coughs> house. So Teresa enjoyed that, going out purchasing this, purchasing that. And I really, you know, I gave her free range to buy what she wants because she she just had lovely taste. And she was a miser, too. <laughs> you know, she, knew, she got good deals. She knew how to get good deals. So we had no problem there. So we ended up over, it took probably over a year to actually furnish the whole house. And um, it was a real nice home. It is a real life. 
And then in 2009, Teresa was then diagnosed again with breast cancer on the bones. That shocked and devastated us. She battled cancer for 14 years until it took her life. Go to 20, 2013. Uh, there's a moral to this story, and that is in life. You may only have a split second to make a decision. The decision I made that evening, stop by her office, changed our lives in ways you could never imagine. So what's now left is only memories. This is our way, my way, of holding on to things we love and don't want to lose. So I loved Teresa very much and we miss her dearly. Her humility, integrity, dedication to her family, and friends was what made her a great woman. I made a movie of Teresa that we will be watching at the end of this service. It's about 30 minutes long. And it's for me and for the family. It will allow us to remember her through the years, that she was special. She was a special mother, wife, grandmother, friend. Thank you.